Hi everyone, this is Holly from Hot Humble Pie. Welcome to my channel if you're new and a big warm hello to my subscribers. I love you guys. Today I am so excited. I have been waiting to share this with you all summer. I'm going to be showing you some amazing DIY and hacks that you can do with the oatmeal containers that we all have and we look at and we wonder what can we do with these. I know we can do something with this. It's a great container. They're sturdy and it doesn't have to be Quaker Oats, just oatmeal containers. But as always, I hope you enjoy the show. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you click that button. For this first DIY, of course, I'm using an oatmeal container, some dowels from the Dollar Tree, and this basket I found at the Dollar Tree as well, but you can use any basket. And for this oatmeal container, I thought it would be easy to put it in this little kit here with the saw and cut it. I thought it was a brilliant idea, but you're going to see why in a minute it wasn't. And as I go here and I make more DIYs, I get better and better at better at showing you the best way to cut the container. So you can see what happened there. It was really hairy and frayed and I had to do sanding and, you know, trimming and it was just kind of a pain. So the second one I decide to use my little craft knife and the little blade keeps coming out. So I get fed up with that and I use my scissors, which does work fine, but I have other ways of doing it further on in the video, but if you only have scissors, that will work just fine. Just make sure you cut nice and straight. And then I'm removing the top of the Dollar Tree basket and these little reed pieces come out so easy. I bought about six of these baskets when I saw them at Dollar Tree. I knew right away when I saw them because they've got really high end ones now in that natural wood and some are stained that they are perfect for taking apart and making DIYs with. They're kind of like a ribbon. You know, if you get that faux leather ribbon at the Dollar Tree, this is right up there. It just takes your crafts from looking inexpensive and it really brings them up to a nice high-end look. So I'm gonna take this reed now and I'm using hot wood glue. Now, the containers are cardboard, which is wood fiber, and I'm gluing wood. But throughout the entire video, I do choose to stay with the hot wood glue. I just found that it is exceptional as far as holding things together, and I didn't want any of this to come apart. It's a much stronger glue. And so I'm just going to go ahead and cover both of these containers with the basket reed. Now here I'm showing you something really cool with these reeds. When you need to custom fit the very top because maybe you want it a little shorter, actually it could go over the top, it wasn't that important, but I wanted to show you that because it's an awesome option. They split and peel really easy so you can get nice straight custom fits. Now this is just my thing, I wanted to finish the back where the seam was. You don't have to do that, I think it added a little bit of character and charm, but you certainly can just leave the seam there if you want to. And now I'm deciding to go ahead and paint the inside black. I probably should have done that first, but uh, as always, I decided when it's done, I thought, no, this is looking really, really classy and it needs to be painted black inside. I mean, you could cover it with material, with paper inside, whatever you want. I chose black latex paint. It has primer in it. It's a nice quality paint. And as you saw, I'm using my water-based stain. I love that stuff. If, if you're interested, it's down below in my description box. There's a link there, but no odor super slippery and slidey. It's got a great glide factor and it has a beautiful stain. And it does come in different colors. So now I'm just gluing the dowels that I also stained on either side. I did measure before I do this, so take your time. You want them nice and even. And voila, you have this awesome double layer towering storage container planter. You could use this for so many things and it looks so high end in person. I love this. <laughs> Of course, for this DIY, you're going to need oat containers. I have two, and they're the large ones. I have some craft sticks, and here I took some thicker paper. It's like a wax paper. You could use parchment paper, the back of the shelving paper, anything that's kind of thick like that. I fold it in half, 
to be the height that I wanted to cut these down to. And this was the best way I found to get an even match on both containers or even just to get an even top so that it's not lopsided. You keep that paper, the bottom of it, even flush with the bottom of the oatmeal container. So that's your guide. And while you're moving the paper around the circle, you're making sure that the bottom of the paper, it, it make sure your paper isn't cut either. It needs to be like a factory made cut that's at the bottom there so that you also have a very straight line that you can follow, but you just follow it around. And then at the top where it's folded, it makes a nice guide, I guess, for you to press your pen against it without it bending or you going over, you know, the, sometimes paper's too thin. I hope I explained that correctly, but it worked really great. That was the best way I found to get an even circular cut all the way around my oatmeal containers. So I'm going to cover these two in craft sticks. And because I have a lot, I decided to go ahead and tape bunches of craft sticks together super tight and then cut them with that little kit that I have and it worked great. And while they were still taped together, I take some sand paper and I'm just sanding a little bit to smooth out the edges. That also works great. I had to do a couple touch-ups on a couple of little pieces I found that were maybe a little more splintery than I wanted, but for the most part, sanding while they were together worked fine. And I'm just gonna use my wood glue and go about gluing all of these on both of those containers. Aren't they beautiful? This is what we end up with. Now, originally I was gonna go ahead and do a stain and then put little feet on them in, you know, cascading heights to make two planters. And then I decided to go in a completely different direction because I see some fall videos coming out. So I thought some of you would enjoy a fall DIY. And I decided to make these little buckets. And then you're gonna need a Dollar Tree sign or a scrap piece of wood that's about the same thickness as the Dollar Tree sign or a little thicker but it's going to end up being a wall hanging. Now when I go to hang them up and glue them you'll see what I'm going to do. I want these to be hanging like sconces on wood and they end up being way too fat and chunky so I have to take one and cut them in half and don't worry when I'm making this craft I have another epiphany about what I'm going to do with the other little bucket. I'm full of epiphanies. You, that's how I craft you guys. I get these. Someone asked me, do you stay awake all night thinking of these things? And I thought, no, actually, they usually come like just flashes out of nowhere. I'll just go, oh my gosh, oh, I'm going to do that. That's so cute. So I cut this. It works great. Obviously, if you want to recreate this craft, please cut your oatmeal container ahead of time. It would make it a lot, lot easier because I also had to go and take my time and fix the seam where the sisal rope meets in the back because I wanted that to be invisible and I didn't want to risk tearing it off because I was using that wood glue and I was pretty sure it would shred my craft project up. So I just had to take my time, be really patient and glue all the little fibers together so the seam was invisible and it worked perfect. And again, next DIY you'll see what I do with the other bucket that's going to be the next one coming up so I'm fixing it right now that's the seam I'm just kind of gluing it together making sure no glue shows and making sure the seam doesn't show because these are all now going to be front facing and I'm taking a little bit of flame there I do have a long lighter I know you can get those at the Dollar Tree I it ran out of the um, what is in there I, uh, I want to say it's kerosene but I don't think it's kerosene <laughs> <laughs> probably torched myself on fire but whatever the lighter fluid I it ran out so I'm using a regular lighter that I have as backup and I'm just gluing these down now and I was showing you with the baby wipe that you can wipe off most of that black soot that you get from the lighter I kind of like a little bit left behind a little bit does stay behind and I think that looks good because when it's fall or Christmas I tend to lean towards the farmhouse or country look and that just adds a little bit more charm but if you were going glam or something well you probably wouldn't be making this if you were doing glam decor <laughs> make sure you glue the top of those little handles down they're not strong enough to stay and I'm using the Dollar Tree Easter welcome sign. The fall package has the welcome in it too, but this is going to be this year's front door decor piece. I absolutely love the way this came out. Look at that. I love this. <laughs>
So moving forward with the bucket saga in part two here, this is what we're doing with the other bucket. You're going to need some more dowels and I'm gonna glue the dowels this time on the inside of the bucket. So you have them nice and even. And now I'm using the Dollar Tree little wood pieces that you can get. And I took one of the Dollar Tree skewers and I'm going to, now remember this is hot wood glue. So it's going to hold together really strong and it's not gonna go anywhere. I'm gonna take that skewer and just put it in the center there. I find that works really well as a brace to hold little rooftops together. Some of you may have guessed what we're making here. It's a wishing well. If you guessed that, you'd be right. And I'm just reinforcing it now with some more glue down the center. And this part, you just have to be patient and let everything dry really, really well before you move forward. But it's nice and sturdy when you're all done. now I'm just taking another craft stick you can see it there on the table cut at an angle and I'm going to put this on either side of the little roof there for decoration but also for extra support it's another brace that helps hold everything together and of course it looks nice and finished that way Using another dowel piece, I'm going to put the center in the middle. And again, you just have to go nice and slow with this. I don't usually use levelers or anything like that. I do it by eye, but if you want to, you could use a little mini leveler to make sure everything's straight. And now I'm just positioning the little roof. I'm going to be turning this upside down here to glue. And I just put little drops of hot glue up where the dowels are to hold it down that works fine again I'm using really strong glue and I think regular glue might work for this but if you really wanted durability long lasting strength I would definitely suggest you use either a hot wood glue or a gorilla glue for this and of course what would a well be without a little handle you have to have the little handle on now I was thinking they have those little tiny mini buckets at the Dollar Tree in the wedding section. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? That would be probably really, really cute. Or you could actually hand make a bucket too. If some of you, I don't, if you don't follow me, you've watched my videos with the little miniatures that I make for tiered tray decor. You would get a lot of ideas from that, how to make a little mini bucket, but that would be cute to add if you wanted. My husband came up and saw this and he doesn't, you know, he rarely comments on my DIYs. You know, he'll say they're nice, but he really liked this well. I have no idea why. And he wanted me to paint it white. And so we compromised because I was going to do it brown. <laughs> So we compromised and I'm distressing it a little bit and it's white, but I guess we'll be keeping the well for a while. It's really, really cute. I'm going to put it on my front porch. And when I say for a while, I mean, it's because I make hundreds of DIYs, you guys. I honestly have to keep rotating them and my decor changes a lot because I don't have the room. I mean, I wish I had a mansion like a hotel where I could keep all of them, but <laughs> I don't, but I love all of them. So on my front porch, I'm going to fill it with seasonal florals. So in the fall, it'll be fall leaves and maybe cotton stems in the spring, lavender in winter, pine cones and pine, but very cute. I love this. And of course you're going to need some more oatmeal containers and I just cut it down again and I'm painting it with the Kills Primer, K-I-L-Z. It's a water-based primer and this time I'm going to try the Antiquing Wax. That's the one I use. It's down below in my description box if you're interested. And as you can see, the wax doesn't quite have the same glide factor that the water-based acrylic stain does. Now I think if you add water 
you could get it to glide more but because this was cardboard I was kind of worried about the extra moisture so rather than fight City Hall I just went with it and I thought you know what natural wood has a lot of texture when you go into high-end home decor stores you see all kinds of design and texture on the decor pieces it adds beauty so I decided to go with the same exact philosophy and here I'm taking my brush and I'm just tapping it along the bottom that's gonna be the bottom and I'm making those little I don't know what to call them little designs I just kind of tap my brush in those little lines and it creates you can see it right there just a beautiful uh, texture and dimension on this piece and then I wanted to give the top some nice finishing touches I was inspired by things I've seen online in the past when you look up modern decor when I was doing the modern decor videos and some of the boho videos these are things that come up they look very similar and you can make it totally for free out of an oatmeal container well you need your skewers from the Dollar Tree and it's super simple I just glued the skewers around measured made sure they're even so it stands nice and even I'm sanding the top and I'm gonna put a little greenery in the top but it was amazing to me how nice and expensive this looked when I was all done Of course, you're going to need an oatmeal container and some paint sticks. I order my paint sticks from Amazon. The link is down below in my description box. And this is the top of the toilet plunger from the Dollar Tree. Now I get the paint sticks without the curvature at the top. I prefer that because I personally would cut the wood off at the top. There's a few DIYs that little curvature wouldn't bother me. And in my paint stick video, in case you missed that one, I'll link it at the end of this video. I actually show you some ideas what you can do with the top of those paint stick little pieces just so you don't have to throw them away. Now I'm going to cover this entire thing with the paint sticks. And I got this idea last summer and then all of a sudden the fall season was upon me. It turns out in the crafting world of YouTube, the fall season begins pretty much by August 1st, sometimes even earlier. You see creators, you know, they'll be as early as like the third or second week of July. And it's because the people who love fall and there are millions of us we like to decorate beginning in September because it's not really a long season and then you move into Christmas. So in order to have time to get all the crafting supplies that you need and then make the things that you need and have them ready to go by September, you really do have to have the ideas ahead of time. So I've just been showing you that I'm using masking tape to hold down these craft sticks and I just traced a lid. We are making a life size butter churn. And of course I have to have a center hole in this lid for that stick to go down. I have wanted one of these for so long. I think they're perfect actually for fall. And if you like farmhouse all year round, even cottage core, this is just such a cute, act. oh, the, I, if you're, if this was in a kitchen, if you have a decorated country core or farmhouse, or if it's in a living room by a fireplace, anywhere you have your little farmhouse decor or country decor, cottage decor, perfect. It's so, so cute. Wait and see how this turns out at the end. It is so cute. So I'm just being very careful before I make that final commitment because I am using the hot wood glue to glue the you know piece down to the final craft stick in the back because I'm using little tiny craft sticks to hold this together on the underside. No one's gonna see this. I just want to make sure that that plunger piece will go through because the little wired end there where it you know twists into the plunger top gets caught really easy. So you really want to make sure you've got lots of room there, but not so much that it's going to flop to the side. So I cut a hole on the bottom of the oatmeal container. The bottoms, the oatmeal container is actually turned upside down on this DIY. Now I'm using my water-based stain with a baby wipe and that's it. I'm going to stain this whole little baby up and it's going to come up so, so cute.
and this is what it should look like when you're all done. So my wonderful subscriber who wishes to remain unnamed sent me a craft supply box a while ago and in there was this awesome metal ribbon. I love this stuff and she said she got it from a craft store that closed down so unfortunately you'd have to go hunting for that. I have a feeling Michael's or Hobby Lobby would probably carry something like that or definitely online but it just doesn't get any better than the real metal. This was awesome. Now I was worried at first the hot glue wouldn't hold it because it didn't seem like it would just logically but surprise surprise hot wood glue like I said it's got some meat in it <laughs> because it held just fine and I made this about six weeks ago and it's still holding just fine so we'll see when the temperature changes come if it changes I might have to put a rubber band around it and use some kind of E6000 but this came up so gorgeous And here's another one for my modern DIY fans. I'm using, of course, the oatmeal container. I'm cutting it down. And now I'm using latex paint with primer to paint the top of this. The oatmeal containers are shiny on the surface, so I don't recommend acrylic paint. You're gonna need something stronger than acrylic paint. I, you know, it'll chip off. And I'm taking these little Dollar Tree cubes and I'm just gonna glue them around in a design on these you know, this is going to be a planter. I've seen a lot of this online in the modern decor, so that was my inspiration. I thought it would be really fun to show you how to do this for pennies on the dollar, and it comes up looking really, really nice. And of course, I change my mind as I go. I'm going to go ahead and take some of the towering blocks and glue two together, and I do a set of four of those because I am going to give this little guy legs. And then I'm going to take my water-based stain and I'm gonna go ahead and stain the legs. And after I stain the legs, I realize I like the whole thing stained. So I go and stain all the little wooden cubes as well. And because it's black, you you know, it wasn't a tragic thing that I did it that way because you, even if I make a little mistake, you're not gonna see it. But, you know, I was careful. And it just looks really striking against the black, that color brown. I just think it looks so, so pretty. And Again, turn it upside down to glue my little legs on to make sure they're even and not lopsided. And also, not all the towering blocks are the same size, so make sure you check that before you glue them together because you don't want them to be, you know, wobbly. You don't want the legs to be wobbly. And I put some greenery in it, and that's it. It came up super cute. So when you go online on Pinterest or anywhere and you look for DIYs and craft ideas using oatmeal containers, you pretty much just get storage stuff. You know, everything's been made into a storage container of some kind. There's some exceptions, but the majority is storage. So I thought, what would this video be if I don't do at least one storage container? Plus I need one. But I found this shelving paper at the Dollar Tree, and of course shelving paper is a great choice to cover these with. Even material if you want, you know, you use Mod Podge, that would probably work. But I just cover it with the shelving paper and I leave a little bit at the top because I'm gonna put little slits in and just tuck that around the bottom. I think it gives it a more finished look. And this, you know, you can use these for kids' crayons, you can use it for your craft supplies, you can use it in your kitchen to store food that normally kind of falls out of its place. And I do find, because the Dollar Tree shelving paper is cheaper, it's not as sticky as it should be all the time, so I just reinforce it with a little bit of hot glue at the bottom, but you can't see it. 
and I'm using the Dollar Tree poster stickers and I chose this instead of gluing because these actually peel right off the shelving paper so I can change this container up because right now I'm making it for pasta or pasta <laughs> I'm not sure which way you say that and I have these little bags that kind of just flip-flop all over in my cupboard and they drive me nuts but my husband said afterwards, oh, that would have been nice for an actual oatmeal container. He could have poured his oatmeal in there and have like a decorative container. So the point is, if you use those little poster stickers, it you can change it up. You can change these around for whatever you want to store. And these do make great storage containers. For those of us that are looking to reduce plastics in our home, they are unbreakable, they're natural, they're free. So the only thing I would say is if you're going to store heavier items, by the Quaker oatmeal because those tend to be a little stronger and sturdier. But other than that, I think this came up super cute. For this last DIY, you're going to need two one large one, one small one, some cardboard, some of the basket reed, and some of the Dollar Tree faux leather. Thank you to the subscriber who sent that to me. And I'm taking that trick again with the paper and pushing it around for the size. I find that works the best. And I'm using the knife to cut. That did end up being the best method. The paper and the utility knife. And I'm just using the one from the Dollar Tree, but that ended up being the best method for a even perfect measurement and a smooth cut that doesn't require any sanding. So now you're going to trace the container tops onto the cardboard and you're going to be tracing two circles of each. So I did one for the small container and one for the larger container. And I'm just here kind of cutting off the edges to make it easier because I plan on cutting these with my scissors you can see them up there in the right hand corner and it's just easier if you get most of the cardboard you know cut off that way you don't have to fight with it now you're going to hot glue the two cardboard pieces together for both the large and the small and make sure as you're doing this that you check for a fit because this is going to be a lid so you don't want it to fall through the center and I'm using the Dollar Tree glue stick this works really great for me. One subscriber came on and said that she bought some and they weren't sticking. So I did buy some more packages and I haven't opened those yet. I haven't needed to, but I'll let you know as we move along if the quality control has changed. But the ones that I originally bought that were in a package of eight are outstanding. So I have this paper that I ordered from Amazon and it's down below my description box, a link there if you're interested. You get quite a bit for your money. It's like antique paper, really, really pretty. And I decide that I'm gonna go ahead and cover them using that paper and the glue stick. Now, when you use the glue sticks, you do have to apply a generous amount. And I really wanna stress that you can't miss any sections and it can't be scant where you're just kind of rubbing it real quick. You want it caked on there really, really thick. And maybe that's why mine sticks so well because I'm really generous, but eight sticks for 99 cents, even now they've reduced the package down to four, still four for 99 cents, you cannot, or a dollar, you cannot beat that. So here I am, I'm cutting the uh, top part and I'm leaving a little overhang again because I wanna tuck that around. And I think maybe if I had to do it again, I would have left a little bit more of an overhang. It's totally up to you, but you know, it would have looked prettier maybe further down in the container but again it came up beautiful but I just left a little bit and I'm using my spatula you can get that at the Dollar Tree Walmart or Amazon I have a link down below in my description box if you're interested in the spatula it's a silicone spatula and it doesn't melt and it saves your fingers and now I'm just covering the lids with the paper as well I used this really pretty stripe paper for the small container and here's what the faux leather ribbon is for. This is gonna be the edge of the lid because we're making little mini French hat boxes, you guys. They come up so cute. This is one of my favorite DIYs too in this video. I love this, it's on my chest of drawers. I think it's so cute. But you go very gentle, don't pull it because if you pull 
or try to press too hard. You know, if you press the ribbon too hard, you'll make it kind of go to an angle and you don't want it to go to an angle. You want it straight down just like that so it fits like a lid. So that's what it should look like when you're all done. And then these are some free printables that are available on the Graphics Fairy website. I've been using her for years. She's very, very generous. All you have to do is go on her website, graphicsfairy.com, and put in French hat boxes, and this comes up in her search. So, you know, I re uh, resized them a little bit. I just um, downloaded them and then dragged them into my word processing program so that I could adjust the size. That's a nice little trick. And now I'm using Country Tan because I just wanted to age these just a little bit. This is a paint I've had forever and I was worried that Apple Barrel didn't make it anymore, but I checked, you can still buy it online. So I don't think Walmart where I live carries it, but I absolutely love the Country Tan. I'm running out of it. So eventually I have to get some more because I think it's like 15 years old. The, those paints, you really, you really get a good bang for your buck. <laughs> but here I am just aging the labels a little bit. Doesn't that look pretty? That country tan just gives a color that I can't get with any other color in the Apple Barrel line. For th this kind of aging, I love that. It's just that really pretty soft mocha color. And now I'm using the Burnt Umber. And I'm going to be using this for the lid because up close you can see a little bit of the hot glue between the ribbon and the you know where the ribbon and the cardboard meet because hot glue is a little lumpy you can see just a little bit so this totally works to camouflage it I just go around and age it you can see what I'm doing there I'm just dry brushing a little bit on the edge and it just adds a lot of I think it adds a lot of charm too so I do it for both the large lid and the small lid and that's it I absolutely love this DIY I had so much fun creating these DIYs. I always do when I use recycled stuff. It's one of my favorite things to do. And of course, if you had fun today and enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button. And as always, until the next video, breathe deep, fret not, and do things that make you happy.